I've talked about this a bunch of times, but people seem to not really get it. So I wanted to actually show in real numbers how exponential growth works and how Tesla could actually reach 20 million cars produced in 2030. Let's take a look. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $2,300. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So today I wanna to spend a little bit of time with my friend, the spreadsheet. Uh, I'm gonna do this in a way that you can play with the numbers yourselves. I'm gonna show you exactly how all this works. This is all relatively simple stuff. Uh, and I just wanna show you, this is a Google Sheet. So if you have a web browser or a phone or an iPad or whatever, you can run Google Sheets on this, or of course you can use Excel because it's basically the same thing. Uh, but I have here the years. So column A over here is the years 2020 through 2021. At, excuse me, 2020 through 2030. And then I have production rates with the current rate of growth. So there was about 500 vehicles, 500,000 vehicles produced last year. There's about 900,000 predicted for this year. That is an 80% growth rate. That's pretty outrageous. And so you can see if we stick with an 80% growth rate, we will end up with 178 million cars produced in 2030. So that is absolutely not gonna happen. Um, that's double the number of cars that are even needed to be manufactured in the world in a year. But I wanna show you this, how this graph looks if we if we do this together, so let's create a quick insert graph or chart. <clears throat> and then you can see that we have a lovely chart here that just goes absolutely crazy. But you can see how it starts off very slow. This is a traditional exponential growth curve. So you can see how the growth starts very, very slowly, and then it just takes off. And in the last like two years, it gains, in fact, in the last year, it gains most of its growth. So that's kind of the main feature of an exponential growth curve is that it starts off very, very flat and you don't notice it, but when it kicks in, it really kicks in and it goes crazy. So I think that's the thing that you really have to keep in mind. And this is the part of the S curve. And I've done a video on that. You can check that out if you want to. <clears throat> I've done a video about S curve adoption. And what you see is that at the beginning, and the S curve adoption is basically just two of these exponentials on top of each other. You got this one going up, and then you got this one and it tails off. So you've got two exponential curves and they meet in the middle and they become more or less linear. So that middle section is where things grow at an exceptionally fast rate. And that's something that people just kind of don't realize. They, they look at something and they're like, oh, this thing had 0.2% market penetration last year. Now it has 0.4% market penetration. Big deal, it's tiny, tiny, tiny. And that goes on for a while, and that's what Tesla's been doing for a decade or so. This tiny little market penetrations, and now all of a sudden it's taking off. And what you're seeing is over uh, a, a, just a relatively small amount of time, people are talking about EVs now. They're really, really talking about EVs, and they're talking about how it's inevitable. And this is something that me and many other people on YouTube have been shouting about for a couple of years, but all of a sudden, it, just in the past couple of months, it seems like everyone has kind of woken up to the fact that EVs are the future, and people are freaking out, like the uh, CEO of Stellantis recently, who basically said, wow, 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 we can't possibly produce these cars at an at a price that people will be able to afford and therefore you should uh, not make us change. <laughs> so that's more or less what he was saying. And he was saying, stop the government incentives, which is a, a really, really disingenuous argument by the by, because there are government incentives for oil. There's trillions of dollars in government incentive around the world for oil production and refinement and all of that kind of stuff. And so, you know, it's saying that there shouldn't be any kind of support for EVs yeah, that's great, and Elon Musk has tweeted this, and he said, hey, if we don't have support for EVs, we should also not have support for oil or anything. And if that was the case and it was a level playing field, that would be fine, but then gasoline would cost in the United States, as opposed to like $4 a gallon, it would probably cost 20-something dollars a gallon, and in the rest of the world, it would be even more, and people would not be able to afford to drive their cars. So, you know, if you start showing the real cost, and of course, the real cost of the carbon aspects of this as well. Anyway, that's a whole other topic. I, I could go on about that forever, but I mostly just want to talk about this exponential growth rate. So how did I calculate this? Well, uh, 900,000 over 500,000 is a 0.8% growth rate, but then to get to this next number, 
You just say C3, which is the cell above, times one plus B3. And it's one plus because of course 0.8 would be a reduction of 20% per time. So if you're growing at 80%, that's 1.8. So you have to add a one to that. And then the dollar signs in front of the B and the three just means that it always will stay on this cell. It won't uh, change. And then you can see that you've got the same thing, C4. So it just keeps referring to the one behind. And in order to get to the next cell, you can just drag this down like that and it will actually fill that in for you. So that's how this all works. So then what I did was I said, okay, so Tesla's aiming at an annualized growth rate of 0.5% or 50% over the next few years. And I said, well, what if we just ran with that number instead? And you can see that we get to about 35 million cars if we start off with 900,000 this year. And again, that number's approximate, you know, whether or not it's exactly 900,000, and you can put your own numbers into this. And you can fill it in later on after we have an exact number for 2021. So you can fill all of this stuff in as you wish. But I'm just running with some just basic numbers. But anyway, so you can do this chart, and you can see how you get the same kind of curve. It's just a little bit softer, I guess might be a good way to put it. So you can see again that we're, we're talking relatively small growth, relatively small growth till we hit about 2026 and then things really start to take off. And in the last few years, we get a whole bunch of stuff taken. And then I said to myself, okay, well, what's the number that will get us to exactly 20 million by 2030? This is what Elon Musk has predicted. Generally speaking, not a good idea to bet against Elon Musk. He's probably right. So he might be a couple of years late, so whatever. But assuming that he's correct and they're going to hit 20 million cars by 2030, if we had a consistent growth rate, I just kind of dialed it in. It's like 41.145%. So again, you can look at this number. You can see if we do a chart that you have this nice, again, it just keeps flattening out because the lower the growth rate, the flatter that exponential curve. But if we kept extending this past 2030 at a 40% growth rate, it would again do that thing where it really took off. But again, you can see it's not till 2026. So it's four years from now before we hit half of that. Um, and then it just takes off and we get to the rest of it very, very quickly. And then this last column is something I think is a little bit more reasonable. So I've put in the growth rates. So 2020 to 2021 is gonna be approximately a 1.8 or 80% growth rate, but that's not sustainable. But I feel like in 2021 to 2022, or the year 2022, as Giga Berlin and Giga Texas come online, one and a half million cars is pretty reasonable. So that's still a 70% growth rate. So that's astounding. And then we can move on in a 60% growth rate in 2023, a 40% growth rate in 2024, a 50% growth rate because they're gonna build some new factories. So I'm just picking up a little bit in 2025. And then you can notice here that according to this chart, Honestly, 7 million cars is approximately what Giga Texas, Giga Berlin, Giga Shanghai, and the Fremont factory all together, if they're all maxed out, can actually produce about 7 million cars projected. So, and they probably will actually be able to produce a little bit more than that. So that means that up until 2026, Tesla doesn't even have to build any new factories. But of course they're gonna build new factories. I mean, that's just a guarantee that they're gonna build new factories. So that's gonna continue that growth rate. So. Let's say in the meantime, by 2026, we can get two new factories up and running. Then we can really start to take off and we can actually see that we could still keep a growth rate of 40%. So, you know, again, 3 million cars between 2026 and 2027, 4 million cars in 2028. And then I'm predicting, projecting a little bit of a back off because we're getting an awful lot of cars here, right? They're producing a lot of cars. They're probably gonna start to slow down their growth rate a little bit because they're going to be maxing out what the market will bear actually, because again, as I've done in other videos, and you can check that out, there's going to be a reduction in the amount of demand for vehicles as robo taxis come online. So there's gonna be kind of a balancing where Tesla's gonna take more and more market share, but then the need for cars is going to reduce in the world as fewer people need to purchase cars. So that sort of thing is gonna be happening around this time in the late 2020s, I predict. And so what you'll see is the growth rate's gonna kind of reduce down to like 20% from 40%. And if we do that, we just have 20% in 2029 and 20% in 2030. And that means that they're producing 20 million cars by 2030. So that's pretty darn remarkable, right? And if you look at the chart that we have now, you can see how it's not exactly an exponential growth curve because the percentage of growth is actually slowing down. So we get the little tip up and then it slows down a little bit. It's still making a nice, almost linear run across the board, but it's slowing down because Tesla just doesn't need to make that many cars by the time we get to 2030. 
So just to be clear here again, I'm modeling everything just based on percentage growth and what Elon Musk has said that he's projecting, you know, they're going to be able to do by 2030. So that's all I'm working with here. I'm not doing anything in terms of actually modeling the way cars are being built and the, the $25,000 model two or whatever it's going to be called, all of that stuff. I'm just using basic percentages here. And I think that it's actually going to be reasonably accurate. These basic percentages are going to sort of model fairly effectively what Tesla is going to be able to do by, again, ramping up two new factories next year and then over the next several years maxing them out. And then in the next four years after that, building two new factories. And that's really all they have to do in order to reach 20 million cars. They just have to do these two factories, Giga Berlin and Giga Texas, and then they need to do... I don't know, <laughs> Giga London or Giga Mumbai, or I don't know. So, you know, they need two more factories. Likely one of them could be in China. The other one could be in the US, but I have a feeling it's going to be someplace else. But anyway, you can see how you just need two new factories in order to get up to 20 million cars per year, more or less, maybe three new factories. But it won't take that much for Tesla to get to these numbers. And that's pretty amazing. And again, if you look at this chart, you can just see how it doesn't take that much, right? So again, you can see that by 2025, they're already at 5 million cars, but then they triple that, they go up to 20 million cars in another five years after that. So four years to get to 5 million from where we are right now, and then another five years to get to 20 million cars per year. So it's pretty remarkable how this works, even if you model in a reduction in the production rate that they're going to make, at the growth rate that they're going to make. Because there's just no way that you can keep, <laughs> there's not a market for it eventually, right? You can't sell 178 million cars in 2030. It's not necessary. But they're going to be able to get to 20 million without having to do anything outrageous or mathematically crazy or anything like that. It just requires that they keep executing on their plan and there's no reason to think that they won't do that. All right, so there you have it. You can see exactly how a basic model, just something really, really simple, can model getting to 20 million cars by 2030 with a growth rate annualized of 40%. And of course, I've sort of modeled it a little bit more carefully in that last version of it, where it's like 70% the first year, and then it kind of backs off over the years after that. But all it takes is about a 40% growth rate from where we are right now year over year, and that's compounded. So again, that's exponential, and it's a lot of growth, but it's not unreasonable for Tesla to be able to do that. And I think that's amazing, and I hope this is helpful. And again, just make this spreadsheet yourself and put in whatever numbers you want and play around with it and see what you come up with. And of course, let me know in the comments what you think the best model is and what the best growth rate is over the next 10 years. All right, I hope you found this episode fun and enjoyable. I think it's really cool to play with spreadsheets. This is relatively easy math, but it just shows how our brains are not really good at handling exponential growth curves and how things can go so rapidly without breaking any you know, basic fundamental laws of statistics or mathematics. So that's very, very cool. Anyway, if you did enjoy the video, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. And we'll definitely be making announcements soon. I'm getting the semester done right now. Super, super busy with all the stuff going on. But as soon as I have a little bit of a break, I'm going to make the announcements about the Patreon stuff. So anyway, keep watching this. You'll find out more about it soon. And of course, if you want to join the club, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in some awesome merch, check out the link in the description. We've got the Tesla Bot t-shirt, which is super popular these days. Don't mess with Tesla. Lots of other t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, etc. So check out the link in the description and help the channel out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $2,300. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking on a link and going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye. <laughs>